Well, hi. Today it happened. The bank said, the forecaster said, we need to have a lower interest rates, and they did cut the interest rates today, and they cut them by half a percent. Wow, 0.5 of 1%. And that's the fourth cut since June. Now, the fact is that it hasn't really motivated the buyers yet in full, but will it this time? And that's the question. First of all, most people don't really realize what all these rates are. What's a benchmark rate? What is a posted rate or an overnight rate? Well, the Bank of Canada sets the benchmark and it was 6.45%. And now today it's 5.95%, half a percent less. But that means that that rate that then the banks use to set their prime rate, prime rate meaning the prime customers. If you've got A class business rating and credit rating, you just had your TV reprocessed, you don't qualify, right? So the best rating is then the prime rate. Now, okay, so what does that mean for my mortgage? Well, again, the rates are somewhat related. First, we have the variable rates. These are the ones that we have. Maybe people signed up for a certain period of time and it varies, either varies with the interest rate in, in most cases or with the monthly payment and so on. But the variable rates are tied to the prime rate. So that's very important to note because the fixed rates are not tied to the prime rate or the benchmark rate or the overnight rate. The fixed prime, the fixed rates are tied to the bond rate. That's where we have this crazy world right now. We're in the US, the bonds are going crazy and the mortgage long-term 30-year rate zoomed from below 6% to 6.8% in a week. Whereas here in Canada, of course, we have a different story. So the variable rates, Lots of people are on variable rates that come due this year. For them, the rate cut is really a, a given because it makes you feel better to have either a renewal at that rate or your personal loan rate, your personal line of credit. All that's going to come down by half a percent. But your fixed rate doesn't. That's why it's called a fixed rate, I guess. And so when you look at all that, and you say to yourself, okay, um, does it really benefit everybody? Well, it does and it doesn't. If you took out a mortgage in 2021 that's coming due in 2024, or maybe you took it out in 2020, coming due in 2025, it likely was at 2.5%. So even though the rate now may be offered to you at 4.5, it's still going to be an increase, but not as much of an increase as before. I mean, let's face it. The, if the average rate in the lower mainland of British Columbia of Vancouver is say six hundred thousand dollars. A six percent rate monthly payment would have been three thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars. At five percent, it would have been three thousand and five hundred dollars. At four percent, three thousand one hundred, and at three percent, about twenty eight hundred. Well, clearly, the difference in six and three percent is a thousand a month or twelve thousand a year. Each one of those reductions uh, is is very very meaningful uh, to a renewal or to your credit line, or your home equity loan, and so on. All right, well, you heard over the last couple of weeks, there were some mortgages, fixed rates, available at as low as 4.35%. I even had one client who got a 4.1%, right? he probably had a credit rating, you know, well over 850. So the point is, you know, we are in a big change. And is that going to move the market? That's a big question. In my view, it won't. Because the reason that they've dropped a half a percent for rate cuts in a four months period, the reason is clearly that the economy is not doing as well. And, 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 and that's a problem, right? I mean, let's face it, we have an unemployment rate at six and a half percent. The US is at 4.1 percent, 10 times the size country. Um, and the statistic statisticians, easy for me to say, say that for every job that we create, two are being lost, right? So you can argue the cuts were a little, too little, too late, or whatever the reason is, the bank looks at numbers differently than we do. They look at the unemployment numbers, they see things changing, closures, credit card, all of the ports that you and I necessarily don't know or don't have access of, or that doesn't make any difference to us one way or the other. But that's the reason how they move the rates. They think inflation is 1.6%, which of course, that's inflation. You take out everything that measures are going up, like rents and house prices and gas and all of that. And the regular inflation is still about 2.3, even that. you know, If you go to my newsletter at ozbuzz, 
uzbuzz.ca, free newsletter. I've told for, to my 26,000 subscribers time and time again, go to shadowstats.com, which measures the basket of things that are measured in the uh, inflation rate from, you know, olden times, say from 20 years ago to now. It's totally different. Everything has been taken out. So the bank, the government likes to, likes to make it as, as good looking as possible, right? So, so the point I'm trying to make is the economy is likely the culprit, not because the goodness of the heart of our central bankers or uh, they just felt like, you know, making us all really happy. No, they need to do this. And in fact, we had thought it would be a quarter this month and maybe a half a percent in December 11, where our bank has another thing. So likely December 1 will be 0.25. And that's what I'm looking for. If they go another half a percent or more, then we're in trouble. I mean, the reason that these things happen is always a sort of a magical reason for it. Now look, they're blaming the interest rates on house prices. Well, no. It isn't that. First of all, we have a sort of a, a logical rate of things that should happen and a psychological rate. And logical would be the rates are down, so the buyers come out and everybody's happy. Well, that's logical. Psychologically, our buyers are a negative frame of mind and they're, they're not happy. As I said on the Michael Campbell show, every, which we air every Saturday morning at, at 8.30, uh, and for the last three weeks, we met, looked at all of the pre-sellers, how they're fighting desperately, not desperately, but very, very hard to get a buyer to buy. I mean, this morning I got an offer to two years of starter fees, two years of taxes, and price reduction between 15000 for a studio unit and 35000 for the, the larger three-bedroom units. That's a big change, and that there's all this. Porsche is being offered, Mercedes S-Class being offered to agents, everything possible. So it's not the rate that's holding these people back. It's they probably see that, you know, there are fewer jobs or is their job in trouble? Or what about my credit cards? And when you look at all in general, we feel worse. But the thing that really is really annoying to me, the government always says we want affordability and we want everything fine. And then they tax us to death. Never mind all, you know, look, the climate change is an issue. Oh, let's implement the carbon tax. Owners are buying too many Canadian real estate. Oh, let's tax them and keep them out. The speculation tax. Yeah, they're terrible people. Let's let's bring that on in. The HST, the underused housing tax. What the hell is that? Nobody knows it. No one understands it. But it is essentially foreigners that already own real estate now need to be taxed and have sort of a vacant home tax. Now think about it. You as a Canadian, you have a house in Palm Springs. How do you like to be having a foreigner's tax. They don't do that to us, but we will do it to them any, any which way that we want. Then we have the vacant home tax, uh, the city tax, property tax. I mean, the Vancouver tax in the last four years went up 41%. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. You have a vacancy home tax, you have a speculation tax, you have a property transfer tax, which we don't have in Alberta. In fact, probably half of the taxes don't go that they have in Alberta. Then there's the GST on new construction. Not only that, if you bought a condo, a new one, brand new, you paid your GST on it. But for some reason or another, you didn't move in and it stayed empty for two months and you sell it, then it's due again. Feels like ripping out your hair. So, and now, of course, the short-term rentals have been deleted. Any, any investor that was hoping to make a, some sort of a return is out of the market. Why, why I cannot buy a 500, 600,000 or a condo year in a nice town like Penticton or somewhere and make it pay at $2,000 rent a month. I needed to show them right now. Well, that's all done. But what they're also looking at, the prohibition on tax deduction of expenditures. Don't let me get going on that. There's a wealth disparity problem. I mean, let's create a 1% wealth tax on houses over a million. You think they don't look at it? They already blew the trial balloon last year with Professor Kershaw telling us that that was really a, a minor thing. And then wealth tax on estates, you know, uh, uh, tax the profit on residences. Okay, so you get my point. The taxes are outlandish. The common area, the costs are outlandish. The rules and regulations, it's funny, we're looking at the new rules of putting a sixplex on a lot. 
by the time you understand the the, the square footage allowances, uh, whether you're not uh, what what you can do, in, in some municipalities, yeah, you can buy six suites, but you have to buy two to build two duplexes with a basement suite. All of them make no economic sense other than having six units you can sell separately and so on. So, you know, I think it's um, Arnold Reagan said, government's view of the economy can be summed up in a few short phrases. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. <laughs> and even Arnold Schwarzenegger says, from the time we get up in the morning and flush the toilets, our people are taxed. They buy a cup of coffee, they're taxed. They buy the bus, they're taxed. They get a gas. You get the message. Tax, tax, tax. So is the interest rate deduction a good thing? Yes, of course it is. It is for the average person. And that's who we're talking about. And it is far more important for those people that have a renewal coming than all the people on a variable mortgage uh, that they're going to get. Because, you know, clearly both benefit, but if I had a $600,000 or a million dollar mortgage, every, as I pointed out, every percent makes a huge difference to your pocketbook. And that's, in the end, that's where we all live. It's, it's the pocket. Now, when you go to the United States, as I mentioned earlier, the bond rates are rising. And since we are all tied to the bond rates in Canada, as well as anywhere else in the world, the fixed rates, the, the, the rate that the bank will give you, they secure that through the bond market. And so it's nothing to do with the Bank of Canada, what they did today. So if you wanted a fixed loan, it's it's likely that. Now, the 10-year rate in the United States was down as low as 3.7 something, and now it's 4.2 something. And some forecasters see it go higher. There's an election overhang. There's all of these things going on. Is it any wonder that psychologically we don't feel like buying something, even though from a buyer's point of view, hey, make that stink bit. I keep saying it over and over again. A developer or any owner will rather have a stink bit than no bit. You might as well try it, right? Warren Buffett says, as everybody's crying, you should be buying. So look around. But the key is rates, fixed rates in the United States, where most of the market is a 30-year mortgage have gone up to 6.8%. And in fact, most of the United States owners are in a 3% range. That's why they didn't move and, and, and you know for 30 years. So they're, they're, they have a totally different system than we do. We don't have a, even anything better than uh, a five-year rate. Our 30-year term just means amortization. They let you work out the payments over 30 years, but it the term could be either variable or it could be fixed. Okay, so here we are. So what's going to happen? The world is in a dire state. We have wars going on. Even places like Germany, my home country, has a, a terrible world uh, economic uh, disasters probably pending. We are reopening all the nuclear reactors because we realize you can, you can I mean, even companies like Microsoft or, or some of Amazon, they're going to create their own nuclear reactor. AI is driving me crazy. Right now, it's driving me crazy, the car dealership and because we forget that the AI has been programmed by a human. And if, he, if the AI runs across a question that is new, they can't handle it. Okay, we'll do a video on that. So in the meantime, the inflation rate is high, is low. The unemployment rate is high. The economy is slowed down. We definitely see a recession. I would urge you to go to my website and, and look at Ozbuzz number 100. It's not out yet uh, for the average viewer that goes to the website. If you put your email in there, it's free, but you would have had it already 10 years ago, but uh, 10 days ago. Anyways, the point is, if you want to read an outline of most of what I just said and a forecast on what we, how we see the market, particularly the real estate market, join our 26,000 people that did give me their email and get the newsletter right away. Join them. And uh, and in the meantime, when we post it, read issue 100, and then the exciting issue, guess what? 101 will deal with uh, a lot more detail as to where the deals are. Have a wonderful day. And yeah, have a beer and celebrate the half percent decline, but don't go overboard. It's not over yet. <laughs>